We're talking with Reverend Charles Streetermeyer and uh, Reverend Cheryl Rivera. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the, re the initial response. There, there are a lot of the same equipment that we saw in Ferguson. We, there are different law enforcement agencies in Northwest Indiana that have similar equipment. There are mine resistant vehicle. I think the city of Hobart has one. There are similar kinds of vehicles in, in Porter County as well. Um, do you think that that sort of equipment should be off limits to police? I think there is a use for it. Uh, there was a very good interview with a man who understands these things who said that there are uh, professional criminal organizations that do have armor-piercing bullets and to engage them it's helpful to have armored vehicles. But I think to bring these into play on, on demonstrations, especially where people are trying to maintain peace, uh, is strikes me as being an attempt to intimidate people who are exercising their constitutional rights. I would have some concern if I saw those show up in my community. I live in East Chicago, and I would have a real concern if I saw those just show up in the community, particularly when people are trying to really demonstrate, you know, um, and they have a right to express that. Um, is, it, is it the context? As I know, actually in East Chicago, I think the um, police arrived um, there was somebody who was building bombs in an apartment in East yeah. Chicago, I think, I this think week. I think it's the context. I think it's the context. I think it's the yes. context, you know. Certainly, how we want uh, police to protect and serve. And I think it really depends upon if the community has a good relationship with the police department. Now, in East Chicago, we have a good relationship in terms of the community. The chief of police gets out in the community, walks in the neighborhood, invites people to be part of that. So if the community is alienated from the police department, that's when I think you have a major problem. That's when I think you have a major problem. I actually had the U.S. Attorney for the Northern District, David mm -hmm. Cap, on the radio earlier this week mm -hmm. talking about, uh, uh, about the gang indictments. And right. one of the questions I asked him was, how do you uh, go into a community and do this kind of work here and pull out these gang members without making yourself look like an occupying force? I mean, mm -hmm. is, is, do you have to really do this in a different way? And he said, well, we do. We, uh, you know, he speaks before churches, does some things like that. He gets out in the community. Is that enough, though? Does that do that? Well, I think it's part of it. As a matter of fact, we've had David come to our clergy caucus, as a matter of fact. Right. He, and uh, the deputy, okay, because part of it is that we want to always build a relationship between justice and the faith-based community. It's not all of it, but it certainly is an important part of it. You know, it's an important part of it. There are some excellent community policing models in which the officers actually get to know all the kids in the neighborhood and uh, are actually positive figures in these kids' lives. Uh, and role models, and I think where that is at present, uh, this kind of incident does not occur. We still, this is an area that, while it's incredibly diverse, in many ways it's not diverse because we're balkanized in all of these small communities. People kind of self-segregate. Mm -hmm. if, if we had one spark, one incident, would that make things much, does that make things much more difficult to try to, uh, to work as a community with all of these small communities here, suburban and urban? If we had a spark, okay, now what do you mean by that? I, I literally, an incident like which happened in Ferguson where you have an unarmed teen shot by police like this, and maybe the information not coming out as quickly as, mm -hmm. as people would have assumed. Mm. I think the other thing that happened in that community or that people recognize is that community, um, there was a lot of disorganization in terms of people not really connected, okay? I think that there is more more at least of an effort for people to kind of collaborate and work across lines of race and class and geography so that we would be able I think to respond faster as a community without things blowing up to that degree but there's always that potential okay I think on the religious community the um, all of the civic organizations all of those have a role to play so that that does not happen here Reverend, do you always feel comfortable when you come down into Merrillville or to Valparaiso or to Portage? Do you feel comfortable in every community in Northwest Indiana all the time? No, of course not. I don't always feel comfortable in every community. Um, but I travel across all of the region. I'm always aware of who I am. I'm always aware of, of where I'm, I'm going. But um, 
and I know that there is there has been a uh, history in certain uh, places. So that's something that I'm always aware of. I'm always aware of who I am. Do you get a um, chance to confront people at all? Or confront is this, people. Bring up your lack of comfort. Are you ever able to really address those things? I think that being in uh, the Federation has been a real, a real opportunity because we talk openly about race. We talk openly about whatever those issues are. It may not always be comfortable, comfortable, but it's always essential. So we don't, uh, we don't hide it. You know, we don't hide it. Yes. And if I am faced with a particular situation or a particular person or a particular incident, I'm going to talk about it because it's going to make me better and it's going to make that other person better. Okay. I am challenged not to ignore it or to in fact deny. It. I am not colorblind and I recently had a conversation with a friend of mine, a Latino friend of mine, who talked about being colorblind and I said there's no such thing as being colorblind. We be aware of it, okay, value the diversity, embrace it because that's who we are, okay, but I'm not colorblind, even though I live in a, um, a biracial family. Are we any better at this discussion, Reverend Streetemeyer? in Northwest Indiana? Where I live in Holbert, I think there's real sensitivity to the fact that our community is changing and is becoming multicultural. I certainly think the leadership of our community is doing its best to embrace this identity, to be a welcoming community for all of its citizens. Uh, there are bound to be bumps along the way, um, but I think that our leaders are making a good faith effort uh, to embrace this new reality. Well, that, that is where we're going to have to leave it. Mm -hmm. Reverend Charles Streetemeyer, Reverend Cheryl Rivera, thank mm -hmm. you so much for being on. Okay, thank you. All righty.